All right, everyone. As part of this channel, I wanted to uh, start a series on providing entomology education for either people who don't know anything about entomology or amateurs that are getting into the field that want to know more about very specific topics. Uh, and I figured I would divide these into like 10 to 15 minute chunks so it's easy to get through individual things uh, without overwhelming your attention span. So the first question about entomology and the learning about entomology is why should I care about this at all? Um, if you are into biology or you are into the outdoors or naturalism or gardening or camping uh, or anything like that, at some point you're going to have to deal with the vast, vast world of arthropods and other and insects um, and their various cousins. Entomology covers an enormous number of topics uh, ranging from you know taxonomy to genetics and agricultural concerns and human health concerns and things like that. So there's a lot to know uh, and the water can get pretty deep pretty fast. Insects by themselves are the dominant group of organisms on the planet. They, there are more species of insects than anything else. There's more biomass of insects than anything else. They are a huge portion of the kind of the global ecosystem. So it's a useful thing to know about if you're interested in any of these related subjects. So how I'm going, how I'm kind of planning this, these sorts of like mini courses is I have a lot of photographs. I have uh, this note taking and drawing app that I can use uh, to doodle things out and write things down as I'm as I'm going just to keep my mind clear and hopefully you guys can uh, pick things up if you're more visual this will help you a little bit as opposed to just listening to me drone on and on so the first question that we have to talk about is what is an insect so let's start with that uh, what is an insect specifically what are the characteristics of an insect so uh, the first one is that they are invertebrates. So that means they have no backbone, they have no spine, and additionally, they have an exoskeleton. So unlike mammals and fish and uh, the vertebrata, all of their armature is on the outside, all of their muscle attachments are on uh, to their external, their external shell or skeleton. Two, they all have jointed appendages. And that is true for all of the arthropods. Three, usually six legs. That's the one that most people know. Um, I say usually because adults tend to have six legs. A lot of immature insects don't have six legs. Um, and a lot of parasitic insects don't have six legs because they've lost them uh, through evolution. Four, they have an open circulatory system. So what that means is they, the easiest way to understand this is comparing it with a human. Human circulatory systems, uh, we have a heart and we have arteries and we have veins. All of our blood is supposed to stay within the arteries and veins. If you have, if it spills out, you've got a problem. For insects, they have a heart that runs along their dorsal surface. So it's the, uh, the heart runs along the back and it pumps blood, but their blood just kind of swooshes around their body cavity. They don't have any arteries or veins. So the heart is just, const is just constantly pumping uh, into this giant cavity and that's how they uh, get their blood around. Five, they have a ventral nervous system. So in humans, we have a dorsal nervous system. Our brain is on top, but our spine and our nerve cord run down the back of us, and then it branches up from there. Insects are reversed. They, they still have a brain in their head, but the nerve cord runs down their stomach side. And six, they have a digestive system with two ends. So just like us, they have a mouth and a butt. Uh, not all animals do. Some animals just have one opening and they just kind of eat and then digest and then regurgitate everything. But insects are more like us. So there's a lot of things that meet 
kind of a, many of those, um, actually, many of those characteristics. And really, I should include a seventh one, which is they have three body segments. That's a big one. So there's a lot of things that meet some of these characteristics, but aren't insects. So what aren't insects? Um, and these are all arthropods. So these are all things with jointed appendages, exoskeletons, um, open circulatory systems for the most part, digestive systems with two ends. But they don't have three body segments usually. They don't have six legs. Um, their brain may be set, their nervous system may be set up slightly differently. So things that aren't insects that you may get confused with insects or that entomologists frequently talk about, which aren't technically insects. So you have spiders and mites. These are arachnids, along with scorpions and uh, their other other cousins. And related to these within the chelicerates are like the sea scorpions and spy uh, horseshoe crabs and things like that, but none of those are insects. You also have the crustaceans. So these are the lobsters, the crabs, the shrimps, um, the crawdads, things like that, which, you know, have the exoskeleton. Sometimes they're referred to mud as mud bugs, but they actually have more legs um, and their bodies are set up slightly differently. You have the millipedes, too many legs. Centipedes, again, too many legs, uh, but often found in the same environments as insects. Entomologists frequently work on them. And then you have a weird group that I believe used to be considered insects called the Entonatha. And these are microscopic insect-like creatures um, that if you ever deal with like soil or leaf litter, things like that, you'll, you'll see them sometimes hopping around like the Columbula uh, frequently in your gardens. They're kind of everywhere. Sometimes they'll invade your house, uh, but their, their heads and mouths are set up differently um, and they are kind of like primitive versions of insects. So now that we know what an insect is, um, we need to talk, talk about where do we start with learning about insects. And honestly, there are two major fields that you need to wrap your head around within entomology in order to begin to understand the field as a whole. The first is taxonomy and systematics. This is the naming of insects, um, and then the grouping of insects into, li uh, into like or related categories based on the characteristics, either physical or genetic. This is where we get categories like the beetles and the butterflies and moths and the grasshoppers and the praying mantids and uh, the dragonflies, things like that. That's taxonomy and systematics. And there's a lot to know about taxonomy and systematics when it comes to insects because there's so many of them. The other field that you really need to wrap your head around and where I really wanted to start talking about this is morphology of insects. And this is really the study of form and function. So this is the anatomy of insects, how their bodies are set up, how their bodies work. Um, and once you understand that, you'll have a much easier time of telling insects apart because you'll know the physical differences between them. If someone hands you a mystery insect, you'll be able to tell kind of what category of insect is this, um, and it helps learn taxonomy and systematics when you know all of the body parts of an insect, you know the terminology that's being used, and you know how their bodies function. Um, so morphology is the study of form and function, and insect forms are divided into uh, repeating segments. This is true for all arthropods. So the typical arthropod segment is one body segment with usually some sort of respiratory pore and a leg. So this is kind of the primitive centipede or insect body segment. This is true for all arthropods. Arthropods have repeating segments. So they'll have another segment attached to this that's generally identical. And this goes on and on and on for however many segments are in that particular arthropod's body. Generally with insects, they have 11 in the abdomen, three in the thorax, and uh, the, then one giant head. But this goes on in, all sort, in both directions, right? So you can have lots and lots of body segments. They're all generally identical and they're all repeating. Each body segment is called a metamere. 
And this sort of repeating of body segments is called metamerization. As evolution uh, has its way with the insects, what happened is each of these metamers got grouped up with their neighbors into defined body segments. And this process is called tagmosis. This process of grouping things together is called tagmosis. And each one of these groupings is called a tagma. And each tagma we give a name to. So the first one is the head. The second one is the thorax. And the third one is the abdomen. Generally, this is, and generally, uh, this is true, always true for the first two. The, this is its own set, uh, set of few segments that form one giant segment. These are, the thorax has three segments and the abdomen has around 11 segments, but uh, as you go through the insects, they'll frequently have fewer than 11, uh, 11 segments. They've lost segments uh, through evolution. So these are the three major body segments of the of insects. So what are what is you know the major differences between the head, thorax, and abdomen? The head is primarily used for the senses, sensory reception. So this is where you have the antennae, you have the mouth, you have the eyes. This is where uh, most of the sensory input is coming in. Although insects can also like taste with their feet and stuff like that, and they have sen sensory receptors all over the body. The majority of them are concentrated in the head, and that's where the brain is. The thorax is primarily used for movement. These three segments almost always have a leg attached. So this is where you get your six legs. And so this is legs. And they also frequently have uh, wings. So the two to four wings are usually on these segments. And then the abdomen is where all the organs are kept. And it's also where reproduction occurs. And that is how the segments are specialized. And if you look on this picture here, you can clearly see uh, the segmentation of the insect. So you have the head up front uh, with the sensory input portion. So you have enormous eyes, which insects generally have. You have these enormous antennae, which are covered with uh, smell receptors. Um, you have all these CD, which help input, uh, the CD are the hairs here. They help input uh, touch receptors, wind receptors, things like that. Then the next section here with the legs attached, this whole section here is the thorax. You have the legs, you have the wings, this is all movement. If you were to cut this thorax open, it's all muscle in order to power all this movement. And then right after the last leg, you get into the abdomen. And this is where all the organs are stored um, and where reproduction takes place. So you have, with wasps in particular, you have very clear and easily defined segmentation. So it's good for beginners to look at. So that's it's been about 10 minutes so i'm going to stop here before we get into the next section where we're probably going to talk about uh, how sections are formed through the exoskeleton uh, and the features of the body wall see you next time